Today we've got a fantastic little project that anybody can do. All you need is a basic understanding of how to work a bevel and a swivel and you're good to go. Shouldn't take more than three or four hours. That's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reach. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Last month we did a butterfly corner bookmark, a corner butterfly bookmark. Anyway, we did a bookmark last month that went on the corner and it was a butterfly and we had a fantastic response to that. Y'all really seem to enjoy it. So this time we're going to be doing a different version of it. It's still a corner bookmark. I'm going to show you how that works, but this time we're going to be doing a daisy. With that, let's go ahead and jump in. First, as always, we need to knock out the prep step. So we need to trace our image onto our tracing film. Then we need to moisten our leather. Then we're gonna take that tracing film and our stylus and transfer the image onto our leather. When you're done, it should look something like this. After that, we're gonna be getting in some swivel knife practice. In fact, we're gonna get in a lot of swivel knife practice. We gotta cut in every single pedal. Now, my suggestion to you is to start at the tip of the pedal and work towards the center. That's gonna allow us to taper those cuts the closer we get to the center of the flower. But if you're not overly confident in your ability to stop the cut where it needs to stop, you might, you might wanna work from the center out. So here's a question for you. When should you start tapering the cut? Let's say that you've got a two inch cut that you need to make, which is roughly the length, length of these pedals that we're working with. When should you start tapering? When should you start lightening up on the, uh, on the pressure on your blade? Well, the answer is roughly halfway through the cut. Now this, this rule doesn't hold up for every single cut out there, but as a general rule, you wanna start tapering that cut roughly halfway through it. That way, by the time you get to the end, you can really allow that cut to fade out. So once we got everything cut in, we can jump over to our bevel. And there's a couple of things here that I wanna show you. We're, I'm gonna show you an image that's already been beveled so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So let's jump over to the tablet real quick. So the first thing I wanna to mention to you is that we're gonna be beveling these petals to the outside. And that means that our, pedal, our, our bevel is gonna be sitting on the outside of these petals. What that's gonna do for us, it's gonna lift those petals and make them look more prominent, make it look like they're on top. If we were to do the opposite, let's say that we were to put our bevel in here and bevel it that way, that's called inverted, and that's not what we're going for here. We wanna make this look like it's standing up, not like it's sunk down into the, to the leather. The other thing that I wanted to show you, the most efficient way to do this would be if you were to, I'm just gonna pick a random one. Let's say you start here and you work your way around, then you come here and you hit that one. Maybe you hit that one. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm working my way around the flower all the same direction so that I don't have to keep flipping it back and forth. Once I've got everything done and I've worked my way all the way around, now I can come back around and I'll probably start going this way. Just because of the orientation, I'll, I'll be working that way. But if you'll work one side, then the other, it'll go a lot faster for you. Thank you. 
So next is gonna be pear shading, and you're gonna notice that the pear shader that I use is very different from the pear shader that you get in your typical beginner kit. Those are typically shaped like eggs. Um, mine's much more elongated, and Weaver sells these. Uh, they're fantastic for this, this application. If you don't have one, just use a small traditional pear shader. That's no big deal, you can do that. But I do wanna jump back over to the tablet so that I can show you how to use this. And this will apply whether you, you're using the elongated pear shader or the traditional one, either one. So let's jump over there. So with this pear shader, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start down in here and I'm gonna drop it in down at the base. I'm gonna create that little pocket right there with the rounded portion of the, the pear shader, and then I'm gonna drag it this way as I tap it. And really what I want to happen is the initial strike should be a little firmer, and then they, they start to lighten up the further up the pedal that you go. So we're gonna start here, and we're gonna move up and get lighter as we go. And we're gonna do the same thing all the way around. Once we go around, we've got all that done, we can come back and we can drop that heel right down in here and really emphasize the curve at the bottom of each of those pedals. Once that's done, we can come back. We're gonna use the pointed end of this pear shader and just give it a real quick tap right here on the end of each of these pedals. What that's gonna do is give it just a little bit of a fold, make it look like it's got a little bit of a crease in there. So once all the pedals have the pear shading done, you've really paid attention to feather out the shading on each one of the pedals. We've added that depth in there. Now it's time to work on the flower center. Now, if you look at one of these flowers in real life, what you'll notice is as the center of the flower starts to open up, the outside edge of the flower center will be much more open than the center. The center is the very last thing to open up. And we need to factor that in as we add the texture in there. So to do that, what we're gonna do I'm going to be using one of my favorite texture tools. This is an E294. So as I go through and I use this on the flower center, I want the texture to be a lot heavier on the outside and a lot lighter in the middle. And what that's going to do for us, that's going to suggest that texture is going to suggest a much more open flower center on the outside. The lighter texture in the middle will suggest a lot more of a tightly packed flower center. 
So one of the things I'll mention to you is that this is one of the few stamps that you can actually rotate as you use it. Most of them you want to pay attention to their orientation. This particular one actually performs better if you'll rotate it back and forth as you work your way across the surface. And the reason you want to do that is because we want to create random textures. We don't want to create repeating patterns. So why would I go through all the trouble to burnish something and add that shape and color and depth if I'm just going to paint over the top of it? Well, my experience has been that if you don't go through the same steps that you would, whether you're painting it or not, what ends up happening is your project ends up flat. When you're painting, you really need all those undulations, the high points, the low points, so that you can paint in the, the low lights and the highlights and the dry brush. All of that shape that you create with the tooling really plays a factor when you go back to paint it. So it's worth the time to go ahead and tool it just like you normally would, even if you're gonna be painting it and covering up all that burnish anyway. So how do we get more depth out of a project that's inherently flat? Well, my first thought is pedal lifters. Well, pedal lifters are great for what you call an inside curve. They really sit down in that inside curve and they'll lift that pocket really nicely. But what we're working with here are really long straight cuts. So a pedal lifter is gonna be a little bit more challenging to use. Yes, it can be done, but there's an easier way to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my craft tool. Now you can use a scalpel. There's a variety of things that you can do. What we wanna do is just be able to get into that bevel line and really lightly create a cut, an undercut under the pedal. Then we're gonna go back with our modeling spoon and very gently run it through that cut and it's gonna cause the edges of the pedal to lift and give us more shape out of our flower. Now it's time to go ahead and cut the flower out of the larger piece of leather. And I've got two pieces of advice for you. One you probably see coming, and that's gonna be a fresh blade. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. The other one is to work from the inside out. And to show you exactly what I mean by that, let's jump back over to the tablet real quick. So if you were working with your scalpel or your craft blade, then you might be tempted to come from the inside or the outside in like that. And really what can happen is you, you run the risk of nicking those petals. So it's a much better idea to start from the inside right here and work your way out. That way it really doesn't matter where you stop your cut. You have a lot more precision on where you start sometimes than where you finish.
Once you got that done, it's time to slick the edges. I'm just using token oil in a needle bottle and a wooden slicker. So now it's time to decide whether or not you're going to be painting it. So if you've done a good job with your tooling and your burnishing, you should have a lot of depth and a lot of color just the way it is. So you may decide, hey, I'm just going to seal it, antique it, and then seal it again, call it a day, we're good to go. That would actually look really good with this particular project. But being a big kid who still likes to color, I decided I'm going to paint it. Now, I didn't want just a typical white or yellow daisy, something like that. You can do that if you want to, it'll look great. I just wanted something a little bit more unique. So I found a picture of a purple daisy with white highlights on the edges of the petals, and that's what I decided to run with. The problem was no purple paint. Now, Angelus has purple paint. That's not the problem. I didn't have purple paint, but you know, any third grader knows you combine red and blue, you get purple, so that's what I did. We're good to go. Now it's time to add those highlights to the edges of the petals. Now I'm gonna be going with a very light blue. In fact, it's almost white, but you could easily go with a, a blue, you could go with a pink, you could go with a lighter purple, all kinds of options here. I decided I wanted to go with a very, very light blue. This technique's a lot like dry brushing, and if you're not familiar with that and you don't know what it is, basically what you do is you take a very stiff brush called a dry brush, get a little bit of paint in it, then brush most of it out on a piece of paper, and then lightly brush across the texture on the project. The only difference with that and this, I've just got a regular brush and I've got a little bit more paint in it, so it's instead of dry brushing, it's like wet brushing. Just use a really light touch and focus on the edges. This is where all that depth and tooling is really gonna come in handy and pay off.
We want a little bit of color variation in the center of the flower. So I want more of an orange for the base and then yellow for the highlights on top. So I went with brick red for the low lights and the base color for the center. And I went with just a traditional yellow for the highlights. And you might notice here, I'm not using a brush to put those dots in. I'm actually using a stylus. And this is one of the easiest ways I've found to actually add dots to any project. You just dip that ball of your stylus very lightly in the, in the paint that you're using, and then very lightly touch it to the surface, and you end up with a perfect little dot. So we're in the home stretch now. All we need to do is cut out the saddle. That's the part that's gonna hold it on the page and attach it to the flower. But that's, that's the next step. That's one of the next steps. For the saddle, we're gonna use two half circles. Just make sure that after you cut it out, you go ahead and punch those stitching holes up in the corner before you paint it. And speaking of paint, I went with black. You can use whatever color feels right to you, but black was nice and subtle. It's, it's not gonna jump out and get your attention. So I went with black. So now we need to attach the saddle to the flower. And to do that, we're gonna be using leather weld just to lightly tack it to the flower so it doesn't move around on us. Uh, just be careful not to get the glue up in the corners where those stitching holes are, like I did the first time I did this, because I was watching TikTok while I was working. Yeah, don't do that. So now it's time to punch the hole so that we can stitch the flower to the saddle. The problem that we have is that the stitching chisels are straight and they don't work on that curve. They don't go around the curve very well. The easy way to get around this is to take your two tine chisel and line your wing dividers up with one of the corners. You can either pick the two top corners or the two bottom corners. Set your wing dividers to the same width. Now you've got a way to mark the holes on a curve. What we're trying to do here, we're gonna take our wing dividers and we're gonna work around the flower center. Now, I'm gonna go back to how you might normally use a stitching chisel. If you're working a line where you're creating holes, you're gonna drop the first tine down in the previous hole, and then you're gonna move forward. You're always dropping one tine in the previous hole. That's what we're doing here. The only difference is we're doing it with a pair of wing dividers. We're gonna work our way all the way around. What that's gonna do for you it's gonna give us the spacing that we need so that we can go in with our single tine chisel and, and create these holes one at a time. Now the saddle is a half circle and the flower center is a full circle. It would look a little funny if we just put the stitching halfway around it. So go ahead and put the stitching all the way around the flower center, even though half of it's really not necessary. It just look a little funny if you didn't do that. So we're just using a simple saddle stitch. And Chuck, as always, has done a fantastic video on how to saddle stitch. We will put a link to that in the description below in case you need to know how to do that. Just work your way all the way around the flower center. Once you're done, we can grab a lighter and heat up that knot just a little bit and then flatten it out with our maul. What this is gonna do is make sure that as we're sliding the pages in, the pages don't get snagged on that little knot. We really are in the home stretch now. All we got left is to add that second piece of the saddle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by adding a couple of dots of glue up there by those stitch holes. Just make sure you don't get glue in the stitch holes. We don't wanna glue them shut.
Once the glue's dry, we can go ahead and start stitching. And this is super simple. Really, it's just a couple of loops and knot it off. The important part is where we start. So if you put this in a stitching saddle so that you got your hands free, what you want to do is you want to pull the saddle away from the flower just a little bit. That's going to give us access to the back side of that saddle. Once we go through, we're going to do a couple of loops and then we're going to come back out the same side. So essentially, you're going to have two tag ends sticking out the back side of the saddle. We can then tie our knot, and because the knot is between the saddle and the flower, it's going to hide. Essentially what we're doing is we're hiding that knot between the saddle and the petals. That's going to do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, go make something amazing.